Hello, welcome to the Tech Talk Show with me, Kazim, this afternoon. Uh, the topic that we're going to be talking about on the show today is Azure Mobile App. And I have Chris Gill with me as the guest of today. Uh, hi, Chris, and welcome to the Tech Talk Show. Hi, Kazim. Uh, thanks for having me today. I really appreciate it. It's great to be here. Oh. Okay, okay. So, so let's start with learning a little bit about you, Chris. Who is Chris and what do you do for a living? Yeah, so I am a, I, I'd like to consider learn it all. Um, I really started about 20 years ago with SharePoint, um, learned and grew um, across a bunch of different Microsoft platforms. Uh, right now I'm a manager of Microsoft applications. So I do a little bit on the Microsoft 365 side. I'm very uh, well attuned with Azure. Um, I do a lot of endpoint management. Uh, I work at a law firm here in Rochester, New York. So it gives me some flexibility to kind of pick and choose and mentor others and, you know, just upskill on whatever I need to, to fill in the gaps. Okay, Th thank you for that quick introduction, Chris. So uh, mm -hmm. since the title for today is Azure Mobile App, I know uh, some students are going to be consuming this now at a later time. Uh, so for the sake of those people who are not really familiar with the Azure Mobile App, so just not to confuse it, right, with a regular app. So, so let's start with that. What is the Azure Mobile App and uh, what are its capabilities? Right, great question. So uh, first and foremost, uh, it's published to both the Apple Store, so the Apple App Store, uh, Google Play Store. It's a very quick, lightweight app. And to be honest with you, it started probably about three, four years ago. Um, the intent was just to get you a, almost a read-only view um, back in 2017 of what resources you had running in Azure. Um, you know, think of virtual machines, maybe different databases, um, other notifications. Um, that has since grown now to almost a complementary role with the Azure portal. Um, you have that ability again to just quickly see, you know, alerts through Azure Monitor um, pushed back to that mobile device. Um, you can quickly flip through subscriptions, um, take a look at any of the resources you have stood up, um, you get notifications on a pretty pretty quick basis, both inside of the app as well as a push notification on the screen if you so choose. Um, and one of the latest things, um, maybe the past year or so, has been the um, advancement of Cloud Shell inside of the mobile app. So I have that ability, if I really wanted to, to, <laughs> to run uh, the Cloud Shell on a mobile phone, um, you know, run any of my Azure uh, commands, any of my PowerShell commandlets or bash. Uh, but it's, it's been really, really nice. Uh, you know, just a lightweight, again, complementary tool um, to the Azure portal. Okay, Th thank you very much. Um, I know you've mentioned now that it's more like the portal on the go, but um, are people able to do most of the very common tasks now that people usually would perform on the portal with this tool as well? Or is yeah. it very, yes, yes. Yeah, so great question. Um, one of the things that I, I frequently see um, folks using, so I, in my line of business, um, Key Vault, uh, we're you know we're monitoring Key Vault for latency spikes. So that's one thing that I could go and say, I saw this trigger. Uh, do I need to investigate? Do I need to get someone involved? Um, same thing with the virtual machines. Virtual machines, I believe, is, is a really big one um, where maybe a virtual machine has stopped, or for some reason it's it's done something untoward. Um, I can quickly go in, find that virtual machine. Um, the beauty of this is it's very visual, so it will give you, you know, a little stop icon or maybe a red icon that something's failing. Um, I can select that resource and I can act on it. So I could start that VM again. I could restart it. Um, I can actually connect to the VM too through the mobile app um, if that's available as basically like a remote desktop connection. Oh, okay, okay. So, so it would be nice then we we'll see what the mobile lab looks like, uh, if you will, if you can show us something. Uh, perhaps uh, maybe one of the tasks you also want to show us is how to configure a lot. I believe that should be one of the uh, very cool features, you know, that we can have on the mobile phone. 
So if anything goes wrong with any of our resources on Azure, we can get notified, right? Right, that's, that's a great point. Um, I could certainly do my best to walk through that. Uh, most of the app things, so I'll be honest, the, the app configuration is all done through the portal. Um, it's not necessarily done directly through the mobile app, uh, okay. but the nice part is you can consume those custom uh, those custom configurations, those custom alerts right through the mobile app. So, so yeah, let's, let's step into it. If you don't mind, um, I'll start sharing. All right. And hopefully you can see um, a copy of the app that's running right now on my Azure phone, or I'm um, sorry, Azure phone. Yes, okay. <laughs> my Android phone. That'd be an awesome feature, <laughs> have an Azure phone. <laughs> Coming soon at some point near you, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> so um, from, from left to right, the app itself, uh, very, again, lightweight. I have multiple tenants that, and directories that I'm part of. Um, once I'm signed in, at the top I have the ability to select from multiple services. Um, I can see any of the alerts that have recently arisen across any of my resources. Um, I see ones that I've recently utilized or have visited. Um, I can click on service health and get an idea of you know what's going on in Azure, um, whether it be where my tenants are located or across the Azure um, service array as uh, across the world. Um, same with resource groups. Uh, I can go in and see any of the resource groups available uh, based on the directory that I'm current, currently selected. And I also have the ability to go in favorite. So I can hop into a couple of these here. But um, again, what we were talking about just a moment ago with a virtual machine. Um, I just so happen to have a virtual machine that is offline. So right now it shows that it's stopped, it's not running. Um, I could select into it. I could click and add as a favorite. Um, I could take a look at any of the activity and tell when it's stopped. Um, but I can also just quickly click on start and say go ahead and start it up. And within a few moments that VM should be started back up for me. Um, same with SQL databases. Uh, if I had any kind of Azure SQL running in my environment, here I do. Um, it'll show me some, um, you know, the, any of the compute resources that I'm utilizing. Again, any of these charts, I can also favorite as well. Um, those will show up back on my home dashboard. And uh, what I'll do is just quickly flip to resources. So as you can see, I can select um, different resources that are running in my environment. I can also filter. And this is really, really nice opportunity to just come in and say, like if there are certain things that I'm not using in my environment, um, I can either select or deselect. Um, one call out is this show hidden types. So this is something uh, I'd say relatively new. Uh, if I select this, I now have the ability to go into dev test labs. Um, but one of the things that I've been tinkering with is static web apps. So I could select static web apps and make that available for a resource that I can show. Um, I can also flip between locations. Um, here, you know, United States, we're in East, East US. Most of my resources are stored here. So I've set those. Sorry, just, just one moment, Chris. Uh, I was going to yes, ask sir. you that too, that is it possible to customize the home screen now so people can quickly get to what they need to see? Was that what you just did uh, now? Um, this, this is part of it. So let, let's do okay. that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to select this filter. It's a great question. So let's go back to the home screen. Um, here, what I can do is select this edit button. And once I do that, now I have that ability to say, well, maybe I don't really want latest alerts up the top. I can move it to the bottom or near the bottom. Um, I could turn certain things off. So maybe I don't want this Azure services button on. And as soon as I click home, there are my changes now. So the Azure services are gone. Um, recent resources near the top. Latest alerts have been moved down. But yeah, great question. So again, yeah, just you know, removing that around. Um, again, not not a ton of flexibility there, but uh, again, you know, kind of gives you that opportunity to just you know make it make it work for you, right? Okay. Okay. 
Um, and is this some, is this something we can as well use on a tab, or is it just Android based? Um, you can use it on. Um, for sure, I've seen it on at least my Android and iPhone. Um, I believe it works on the iPad as well. So, okay. yeah, great question. Um, yeah. The notifications, and I wish I had more in here, and I know you put me on the spot for creating some too. But, <laughs> yes, um, okay. but yeah, um, what you would see is um, that ability to go into, into your tenant, um, create a Azure Monitor alert, and one of the options inside of that Azure Monitor alert is to enable the push to app. So as long as you are selecting that checkbox to say push this notification to the app, and then um, including the user that's going to be signed into the app, they will receive the notification as both a push and um, within this application itself. Okay. Um, and the last thing I know I mentioned uh, Cloud Shell. So Cloud Shell, Cloud Shell. something. Cloud Shell is something recent. Um, God bless anybody who wants to really run it on their on their phone. Um, I'm going to click restart. But again, um, you know, small device. Um, I'm cheating a little bit here because I have a keyboard and mouse with me. So um, it's a wonderful feature. But again, uh, live Cloud Shell. I'm using PowerShell right now, connecting to that tenant. Um, I authenticated to Azure, and now I can just say AZ VM list. And if I'm familiar with, you know, at least some of the basics, uh, I should get back a VM ID, any of the virtual machines that are running in my account, um, just all the details that I would expect from the full live, you know, PowerShell experience right on a mobile device. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's really cool. Uh, so what do you see, Chris, as the future? You know, where do you see uh, the Azure mobile app in two, three years from now? Yeah, great, great question. Um, I would expect that, you know, again, just the ability for those things to, to keep growing. Um, potentially, uh, you know, if I create something, I mean, you know, we're all creators, right? At the, at the heart, at the end of the day, we're all creators. So I, I would love to go out and say, I have this maybe a view, a dashboard view. I can share this out with other folks. Um, you know, if that's a pushback to Azure and, you know, for other people from my team can select that view. Awesome. Uh, same thing with, you know, uh, shared shared alerts, maybe different um, shared monitoring dashboards. Uh, that would be, you know, a really rich feature to get out there. Um, I always look back to that, you know, reusability, uh, like any of the stuff that we could kind of bubble up as a templated approach um, would be fantastic. Um, I know they've done a lot of great job, like Microsoft has done fantastic with uh, the views and monitors and, you know, live metrics there. Um, I know I didn't dive into App Insights, but, you know, for anyone who's using um, Application Insights, a custom web page or custom application, uh, those are real time. Those those charts are real time. It's giving you statistics back to, to show you, you know, availability, uh, resource utilization. So, um, you know, again, just, just adding additional richness there. Um, Maybe not necessarily on the applications insight, but if there's a you know custom, um, you know maybe a Kibana type approach or you know a different tool that we could inject there, that would be fantastic too. So, good question. Okay, okay, and thank you so much, uh, Chris, for making out the time to join me on the tech talk on the tech talk show today. Uh, any last words from you before we say bye bye now? Uh, I would just say thank you for for you know inviting me. Thank you for uh, all the listeners that you have. Um, I really appreciate the time. I really appreciate the opportunity to share this. Um, I hope folks find you know use in this tool as much as I do. Again, um, you know this is very much intended to be complementary to the portal. So, you know if you're not using both, I would argue you're probably not using Azure to its fullest extent. So you know <laughs> go download it, play with it. Um, reach out to me. I'm on Twitter, LinkedIn. You know, any questions, please, by all means, reach out and let me know. Okay. All right. So you heard it from Chris. Uh, please, um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, do so. It's the Tech Talk Wednesday. 
uh, on YouTube, and you can have a rewatch of the previous episode and this one as well on YouTube. Uh, so this is where we're going to call it a close for today on the Tech Talk Show with Nick Azim. So do continue to keep safe. And from myself and Chris now, it's the bye-bye. And let's do this again another time. <laughs> Take care. All right. <laughs>